Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to the team at Lamborghini Sevenoaks, I'm bringing you an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of a 2018 Lamborghini Urus. Lamborghini are calling their latest SUV, which follows on from the monstrous LM002, a super sports SUV due to its aesthetic dynamism and performance. However, despite it being Lamborghini and the world's first SSUV, it is said to have usability typical of other SUVs. And despite being a brand new creation, it's important to note that this car does share some fundamentals with other cars from the VW Group's lineup, such as the Porsche Cayenne, Audi Q7 and Bentley Bentayga. Nonetheless, Lamborghini has applied their style flair to the exterior and interior and ensured the Urus comes with uprated output and performance in comparison to its group relations. Its name follows the tradition of the Reventon by being named after an impressive type of bull that is unfortunately now extinct. It is finished here in Bianco Icarus and comes in at 1,638mm tall, 5,112mm long, 2,181mm wide and has a curb weight of 2,197kg. Before we can take a look at the engine, we must first pull the lever found to the right of the driver's footwell. We can then move to the front where we need to pull a small catch to the left to release the bonnet. After raising it up, it is self-supported on two struts, and if we look centrally, we can see heat shielding. This brand new Supersports SUV is powered by an engine that currently isn't found anywhere else in the Lamborghini lineup, a bi-turbo 4.0-litre V8 that produces 650 brake horsepower and 850 Nm of torque. This output produces a 0-62 mph or 100km per hour time of 3.6 seconds, and a top speed of 189.5 miles per hour or 305km per hour. The bonnet can then be brought down and closed with a firm depress. This specific car is sitting on the optional 22-inch Nath alloy wheels, finished here in titanium. There are, however, four different wheel options, ranging from 21 to 23 inches, each with three finishes. This being an SUV, it does come with four-wheel drive and four-wheel steer with variable settings. However, there's also a torsion differential set centrally that allows for rear wheel bias of 60%, but this can be increased to 85% for a dynamic driving experience. To aid the car's super sports credentials further, a torque vectoring differential has also been added to the rear to ensure tighter cornering as power is sent to individual wheels. Stability is provided by specially designed wishbones and pivot bearings, which are connected to an adaptive air suspension system that can raise, lower and firm ride to suit different driving conditions. Braking is provided by carbon ceramic discs, 440mm at the front and 370mm at the rear, complemented here by calipers finished in red. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the in-depth exterior tour from front to back. From a design perspective, the very front looks quite complex, but it's essentially a very open area to allow for as much air intake as possible. The car's dominant design language comes through via hexagons and Y-shapes. There's a slim splitter at the very bottom, with the first intake section above broken into four segments. These are said to channel air under the body for improved aerodynamics. On either side, there are parking sensors below and intake areas for the radiators, guarded by Y-shaped panels. These areas are edged in piano black. Above the number plate, there's another angular intake section with a park assist camera centrally. Above this, we find the central grille formed with dominant hexagonal design language and another larger assistance camera. These gloss black sections can also be finished in the car's body color. The lights on either side are formed from a Y-shaped day running light and central LED arrays in the interior. These come from Lamborghini's advanced LED system Moving back, the bonnet has three dominant sections, two Vs on either side, and a dynamic ridge running through the midline. There's a wide windscreen behind, with two wipers below. We can now move to the angular lateral aspect of the Urus. The wheel arches here have angular gloss back surrounds. The dominant body line breaks into a V here, with a small gloss black fake air vent and Italian tricolore. Under, a sharp aesthetic line fades as it runs further back. Running along the bottom, we find a rather subtle chrome and gloss black side skirt. Moving back up, the electrically adjustable and folding wing mirrors are finished here in gloss black and come with integrated proximity sensors, lateral indicators and cameras underneath for the park assist system. The angular door handles underneath signify the keyless entry system with the small indents towards the rear. Moving back, the fuel tank flap flips out after a light depress to its top left corner. The fuel tank itself has a max capacity of 75 litres. However, this is enhanced to 85 litres with the reserve tank. The Eurus can return a combined max MPG of 22. Above, 
we find the optional panoramic roof and behind, a rather large dorsal antenna for the radio and communication systems. Moving back, we also find a rooftop spoiler that follows the angular design language, but is apparently meant to smooth airflow and not produce downforce. Below this is the equally angular rear window with the rear lip spoiler extending outwards. Presumably this will serve a similar purpose to the wing above. Below, the rear LED light complexes show the wide design language found at the front and are built into the side of the car to provide lateral visibility. Between the lights, there's a gloss black section with a chrome Lamborghini logo. Moving down, we find the plate lights and reversing camera centrally. On either side, there are air vents that help to reduce pressure in the rear arches. Moving down, the section below has come under some criticism. First, we find long reflectors on either side, then the four-fin central diffuser, finished in a light silver here. The valve-controlled sports exhaust below is finished here in matte black, but can also come in bright and satin chrome. Let's hear how it sounds, first in Strada or normal, then Sport and finally in Corsa. The observant among you will also spot the car lower by 9cm as it is placed into Corsa. Now we've finished the exterior tour, we can move inside. The rubber and aluminium key feels weighty and comes with buttons to lock, unlock and open the boot. The handles pull out easily, as do the doors. The interior here is finished in Nero leather with Rosso contrast stitching. Out of the six leather and Alcantara finishes available, the seats are upholstered here with the optional Q Satira diamond pattern. The interior of the Eurus is said to be a blend of Italian craftsmanship and the latest technology. We can now start the interior in-depth tour with the doors. They start with a smooth leather upholstered panel that ends with the LED lock indicator. The way this area rolls over a sharp angle signifies how the dynamic lines outside are first brought inside. Moving forward, we first encounter an aluminium and then piano black wood inlay. This is one of three finishes, open wood pour, and open wood pour with smaller hexagonal aluminium inlays can also be spec'd. There's a slim Alcantara upholstered section with the door release and lock controls. Underneath, there's a padded soft leather upholstered armrest with Rosso contrast stitching. The controls ahead are for the rear child locks, all four electric windows and the electrically adjustable wing mirrors. Now at the bottom of the doors, we can follow contrast stitching to the deep storage compartment and then a button to open the rear boot lid and seat memory controls. And finally, the first speaker from the 21 speaker, Advanced 3D Bangnet Olufsen system. Despite this being an SUV, the sill here is neither that high nor wide, so ingress and egress was straightforward. Now moving inside, the sill is topped with the standard aluminium kick plate. As we move up, we find the bonnet release. Touch controls for the exterior lights and the first manually adjustable air vent. The steering wheel is to the left. Before we can take a closer look, we must first close the door. It is easy to reach out and grab and light to pull in. The wheel starts with an aluminium 12 o'clock marker and smooth leather on either side. Perforated leather is found at the 9 and 3 positions, but Alcantara can be selected instead. The controls to the left are for the driver's display ahead, horn controls and Lamborghini crest centrally, and media, radio and telephony to the right. These paddles are linked to the car's 8-speed single-clutch ZF transmission, where it can be used in full auto or semi-auto modes. To turn the car on, we must turn to the left, raise the iconic red flap and depress the button. All three screens then turn on and the wheel lowers.
The purely digital screen ahead provides information for from left to right. Water temperature in Celsius, radio station, time and date, oil temperature, warning lights above, revs, gear, speed, mileage, remaining range, short-term trip, boost gauge and fuel level. The screen to the left can be adjusted, time and date, MPG, long-term trip, driver assistance such as lane tracking and blind spot assist and speed limit indicator. Then moving right, the next option screen is for the FM, AM and DAB digital radio, then telephone connectivity, and finally navigation which can be scrolled in and out of. Looking at the dash, the air vents have further vertically facing vents. Tweeters from the BNO system raise up at the corners. There's an Alcantara section behind, surrounding the projectors for the heads up display. There's venting to the left of this, and finally the second tweeter. Below we find two hexagonal manually adjustable air vents. The Eurus comes with Lamborghini's third generation infotainment system. It is split between two full touchscreen displays with haptic feedback. The top screen is for entertainment and the bottom for comfort. The first menu we can select is for the AM, FM and DAB digital radio, where we can scroll through or use the manual input option. Next is media, where a device can be connected via wireless or physical connections. Telephony, mediated by similar connections is next. Calls and messages can be received and sent here. Navigation comes after. It is here where we can really see how responsive and crisp the display is. Pinch and spread motions can be utilised to zoom in and out respectively, and we can manually move around the map. Lamborghini smartphone is the car's menu screen for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Eurus is essentially the vehicle exploration menu, where we can view the extensive list of options pertaining to the car itself. In Anima, we can view the enlarged set of drive modes that are found in the Eurus. It comes with the standard performance orientated Strada, Sport and Corsa, but now three more. Neve, or Snow, Terra, Land, more specifically for off-road conditions, and finally Sabia, or Sand. Here we can also manually raise or lower the air suspension. Vehicle information has two screens. The first shows active torque information from the vectoring system. The second embraces the off-road capabilities of the Eurus and displays the car's tilt angle for when driving over gradients. In seats, the front two seats can be individually adjusted into position. Moreover, the massage function, which has three modes, wave, pulse and stretch, can be accessed. The final screen here is for easy access, where the driver's seat will slide back when the car turns off. In AC, we can adjust front and rear climate controls. The lights and vision controls can be used to adjust the exterior lighting system, such as auto and entry headlights. However, another first for Lamborghini, there is now an ambient lighting pack that can be spec'd, which offers up to six colours, blue, verde, rosso, arancio, giallo and bianco. In parking aid, we can switch the front and rear sensor rays between auto and manual activation and adjust the alarm volume. The next menu option is settings and service, where we can access general setup information, such as oil level, garage door opener, air suspension, and service interval information. And finally, the driver assist menu can give us extended access to the optional advanced driver assistance systems. In settings, we can adjust options for the various screens we have just looked at. and on the final page here, we can adjust the owner's user profile and messages. There are also five direct access controls to the right-hand side for the main menu, radio, media, telephony and navigation. The final thing we can look at on this screen is the Park Assist camera system. It is initially split into two segments, a top-down camera view to the left, which can be turned to a graphic image, and front view on the right. This portion can be switched between eight displays, Rear corners, front corners, rear, rear with guidelines, top down, front with guidelines, front and surround composite. 
before moving onto the screen which is dedicated to comfort management, we can look at the small open area underneath that comes with two 12 volt sockets. Between the two screens is this segmented section where we find four touchscreen buttons, four from left to right, traction control off, hazard lights, front full demist and rear full demist. We can now move to the final screen below. The top row of touchscreen controls is for from left to right. Start stop, a limiter for when driving on steep gradients, lane tracking assist, main menu shortcut, garage door opener, HUD off and to turn the screen on or off. Then temperature and fan direction for the dual zones and finally seat heating. Below are the controls for Anima to the right, Drive Select Central and Ego to the left. The Anima control allows you to switch between the different road and off-road drive modes that alter powertrain, suspension and steering. Here are the different displays on the driver's screen, starting with Strada and ending with Neve. Notice how the displays to the left change from torque, power and a G-meter to temperature and gradient the terrain colour also changes below the Eurus icon. Moving to the right, we can use the controls here to turn the engine on and off as seen earlier and put the car into park and manual. Finally, we are presented with the car's Ego controls, which are a new addition for this and the Aventador S, where the user can alter powertrain, suspension and steering settings independently. Behind and to the right is another button row. There's a small open area at the front, then the button for the reversing camera, auto mode, driver assistance, and another small area behind, most probably for the key. To the left, there are two pentagonal cup holders. There are dual leather upholstered armrests behind that lift up easily without needing to depress any buttons to reveal a wireless charging station and USB connectivity. The seats either side are finished in full Nero unicolor leather with Rosso contrast stitching in the Q Satira option. Alcantara can also be added. These are the 18-way adjustable front seats where controls can be found to the sides with additional massage, heating and ventilation settings. Now we've finished in the front, we can move to the rear. The aluminium door latch pulls out easily and the door feels light to the push. The rear follows the same interior style and design as the front. In this model, the optional four-seat configuration has been selected, which increases comfort for the eight-way adjustable seats. The rear doors also follow the design of those at the front very closely, with a piano black and aluminium strip at the top, a single window control, storage area and speaker. Moving in, there's also a small kick plate on the rear sill. Now sitting inside and taking a look around, it feels, at least to me, like quite an airy and spacious environment. There's an air vent on the Alcantara upholstered pillar. With the driver's seat pushed back for easy access, there is still good rear legroom and a slim pouch. The central column extends back and finishes here with air vents, a display control panel and small storage area below. This small touchscreen display can be used to control rear dual climate controls and three-stage optional seat heating. Because the optional four-seat layout has been selected, there's a fixed column centrally that features two pentagonal cup holders and an open compartment behind. The dual leather upholstered central armrests can be lifted up easily to reveal a deep illuminated storage area with USB connectivity. Above and between the seats we find extended Q Satura leather and this small hatch secured by a leather toggle. It can be opened easily and is meant to allow for ski storage.
As previously mentioned, the seats here are individual, 8-way adjustable and heated, but a 5-seat configuration can also be spec'd. Now we've finished in the rear, we can move to the car's remaining storage. There's a lockable and illuminated glove compartment on the passenger side, where we can also find the car's CD player. The rear boot can be opened by using the button to the bottom of the key, the button above the rear plate, or the optional hands-free tailgate option, where the user only has to wave their foot under the bumper. The boot has 600 litres of storage space, but can be increased by folding the seats. It is illuminated on either side. There are buttons to raise or lower the rear for easier access, a coat hook, a small netted area, divisions using the optional cargo management system, The lid can then be automatically closed by pressing the button found here. Moving back inside briefly, the large sun visors are upholstered in a very soft Alcantara and come with illuminated vanity mirrors. Looking back, we find the optional panoramic sunroof and ahead of this, warning light for the open doors, front and rear reading lights and central controls for the sunroof. Finally, the slimline borderless auto-dimming rearview mirror hangs below. So that concludes my in-depth tour of this 2018 Lamborghini Urus. Thanks again to Lamborghini Sevenoaks for the filming opportunity. Please find all their contact details in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.